Hello, my name is Peter Avenant, and um, welcome to the BIML introduction session webinar that I'm going to give. Um, before I start, just a little bit about myself. I've been using BIML now for about four years, and about two of those years, or pretty much over two of those years, has been Bits Helper. So I started my career in Bits Helper. One thing you'll learn about me or know about me uh, if you go through all of these sessions is that I'm absolutely mad about BIML, and I'm pretty proud of it. I'm a contributor at bimlescript.com so please go and have a look at uh, some of the articles that I've put up there and I'm also the co-founder of Verizons Australia so what's BIML all about well when we started out um, as Microsoft BI professionals we didn't really wanted to drag and drop boxes uh, in, a, in a GUI like Visual Studio so this takes me back uh, when I started uh, using SIS in pretty much in 2005 and was showing um, some one of my colleagues how we are going to apply our, our dimension pattern and uh, you know we were quite excited to, to build the pattern up and, and, and get everything done and then we realized well then we now have to actually apply that to 30 or 40 dimensions and that took us a couple of weeks if not months to do so if you're into bi we, we really are here to sort of try and drive insights from our data we we don't really want to be stuck with doing the mundane task and one of the key things for me is we also want to be able to do that very uh, much more consistently and, and, and also reliably than, you know, you've ever thought possible if you haven't used BIML before. And we want to have fun doing it. You know, if you can get rid of all of the plumbing and all of the things that you really, really want to do and focus on the things that you want to do, which is uh, drive insights into your business, you are going to have a lot more fun. So what is BIML? Well, BIML, think about BIML as HTML for SQL Server. It's an XML-based language, and as we go through these presentations, you'll see that it's actually human-readable. As you type it, and as I type it um, in this presentation, you'll see that there's nothing there that really you'll think about and go, wow, I didn't think that they would call this that way and that way. And I've been using Bimble now for four years, and to be honest, I haven't really found anything that is named out of place. We have full fidelity with the Microsoft SQL Server uh, product, all the way from the database, the RDBMS, and your database objects, to the SIS pattern, and if you're using um, the MIS product, we, we can do analysis services also in that, so really end-to-end. -end. And uh, one thing that you need to remember is that if you can do it in BIDS or SSDT, as it is now called, you can pretty much do it in BIML. So BIML script is um, pretty much to BIML what ASP.NET is to HTML. Um, what that allows you to do is add C Sharp or VB or pretty much any .NET language code nuggets into your BIML file and really generate vast amounts of BIML, which then obviously converts to vast amounts of SSIS packages. I'm not going to touch too much on it in this video of generating a lot of packages, but the next one that I'm going to do, you'll see how a very little bit, uh, amount of BIML script could really drive a lot of um, ETL for you. Um, it's metadata driven, um, SQL Server development. So if you've got metadata anywhere, whether that's a data dictionary, or even if your source system is very well defined, you can use your source system um, and the metadata in there. In other words, the foreign keys, the primary keys, the identity columns in there, which again, in the next session, I'll, I'll demonstrate how just using metadata that is available in your source system, you can build a really a fully fledged staging uh, environment. Now we've got a couple of different types of BIML scripts and um, one is called the expandable BIML script, which is pretty much if you're using Bits Helper, you've got access to the expandable BIML script. That is when you right click the BIML script and you say, uh, generate package or expand BIML file. And then you have the live bubble scripts, which I'm going to show a little bit um, in this session. But everything that I do demonstrate in this session, you can actually do in Bits Helper. So although I am using live bubble scripts, which is available in Mist, you can have not a similar experience, but you will be able to use all of the code that I'm presenting in here um, in Bits Helper. So it will also run in that environment. And then Transformer Bubble Script is a little bit more of an advanced subject, which is really one of the key features of, of MIST is to have these transformer frameworks, which is if you're in an enterprise environment, you really do want to investigate transformer BIML scripts. And we are going to do this a uh, couple of webinars a little bit later in the, in the series on that. So I'll give you a product overview. What you see at the top uh, left there is uh, the MIST icon, and that's the um, integrated development environment that we use. You can replace that with a Bits Helper logo. So Bit Hel Bits Helper is available on CodePlex. And with um, Mist or Bits Helper, what you can do is you can actually create two, or you should think about your BIML scripts in two different sections. The one is customer specific or project specific um, 
promo code. In other words, when you're writing a package that really is going to do one thing that is relevant to that package, that's what you'll call a, a package or project-specific piece of PIML. And then you have your shared scripts, which I'll show you a little bit of how you can actually centralize your scripts into shared scripts that you can then reuse across your entire organization. Now, all of these BIML scripts is passed down to the BIML compiler, and, and that then generates up all of the assets. Now, if you're using MIST, you can get your documentation and lineage tracking. Um, if you go further down the right, you can obviously, using Bits Helper and MIST, you get database. You can push up all of your um, relational database objects and your ETL, your SSIS packages, which is pretty much about with 80 or 90% of our customers use that functionality, and it's, it's one of the key functionalities. Um, in MIST, obviously, you have the ability to even use that metadata now to drive um, the, the creation of analysis services cubes. So what will we cover today? Well, I'm going to just, uh, in the first little script, I'm just going to set up the environment, you know, set up connections and etc. Cetera, et cetera. And then I'm going to write a, a fairly uh, simple table schema import from the source system. So that's where you're going to use the natural metadata that's in your, available in your source system. And then I'm going to take that file and I'm going to change it to use an, what we call an include file, which means that you can take a, a small piece of code or a big piece of code, centralize that in a file, and then multiple BIML files can use that. And the last one is something that, that I use quite a bit, but um, I don't see a lot of examples on the web on that. So I thought I'll, I'll put it in here just to give you an idea of how different ways that you can achieve the same thing. So it's something which we call core BIML script, which allows you to call another BIML file and with parameters, and I'll show you how that works. So with that, I'm going to go straight into the, the BIML tool. And I have pre-configured my environment a little bit, and these files are pretty much almost all empty. Now, one good thing that you would want to adopt early on in your BIML, I suppose, journey, if you are new to it, is a bit of a naming convention. Now, what I normally do is I, I, set, I, I kind of number my files in the order that I'm going to develop them or even execute them. So the first file that I always set up is a sort of my zero files uh, or my environment file. And this is the one that I've got open over here. Now, another good thing to do when you when you um, develop BIML files is to kind of create a scaffolding or a wireframe of what you're trying to achieve. Don't try and get stuck into your BIML code straight away. Kind of think of it almost like creating a visio diagram in BIML. So I'm going to do just that. So what we have in BIML, as I said, it's XML. So in a all XML, you have a root node, and our root node is called BIML. Or you could, if you're working in MIST, you could think about almost like this file here as the root node. And under the root node, you'll have connections, databases, schemas, tables, uh, dimensions, etc., etc. So if I open up this tag over here, the first tag here, you'll see that here is all of these things that I can reference. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of configure my environment from the top down. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some connections and I'm going to create a connection here and I'm just going to, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, uh, here and I'm going to give it a name. Um, sorry, that's a typo there. That's why it's not recognizing it. Connection here, I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to, the name I'm going to give it is just going to be source. And I'm going to give it a connection string. And I'm just going to leave that empty because I'm going to paste that in. I, I don't really want to start typing uh, connection strings on, in this the presentation. And the next thing I'm going to do is another connection. I'm just going to give this a name of uh, target. And again, I'm going to do a connection string there. Um, and I'm going to close that off. Um, and I'm just going to do a last one here called, sorry, I'll open the tag up. A last one here called Data Warehouse. And uh, sorry, and, and that's going to go have another connection string there. And that's it. So think about those as having connection strings. So what I then do is I'm going to want to define a database. So. So I'm really going to define a database here for my staging environment or my extract environment. So I'm going to go from source and I'm going to go into the staging environment. So the thing, thing I need to hit, do here is so obviously my source system exists. So for my staging environment, I, and I'm going to call this, um, let's give it a name here of aw underscore extract. So AdventureWorks extract, effectively what that's what it stands for. And this is going to be my, I'm going to 
put uh, set this to my target connection scheme and that's it i'm going to close it down so i've now set up my database and the next thing i'm going to do I'm, i need to create a schema that i'm going to actually uh, drop all of my uh, tables into and my schema here is just going to be um, called stage uh, so i'm just going to give it a name here of stg uh, wrong way around stg and it needs to be be connected to the database here and the database is going to be aw underscore extract so as easy as that i've pretty much configured my environment and as i said as i'm just going to paste in here very quickly all of my connection strings there we go um so what i'm connecting to is that my adventure works data where uh, the adventure works 2012 which is my source aw extract and an adventure works data where effectively here so that is my file here. Now you can see here that, that that little guy here has gone off to the right there. We've got this great little tool here called format um, documents. So I'm just gonna format it with spaces and there's my connection file. So I said um, earlier on that um, I'm gonna show you what live normal scripts does. Now in a bits helper environment, when you have these multiple files as you're gonna create in any solution is when you select them and you say, listen, go and execute or generate my packages, some of the files will create in-memory BIML objects or in-memory objects as we call it. Now, what MIST allows you to do is kind of logically visualize what those objects is gonna look like. So what you'll see here is when I right click here and I go and say, listen, convert this to a live BIML script. What you'll see here is it creates these logical objects. These are not physical objects, they're logically, logical objects and they exist in memory. So there's my data warehouses, my, my connections here my database and my schema and if I click on any one of these you'll see that they still only have one BIML file in the in, in the background there okay so that's just one file there so now that I've created my connections and my schemas I'm going to want to import some tables and as I so I'm going to go here and I've kind of prepared this a little bit so what I've done here is I've um, and as I said this is where you will see the first uh, sort of BIML script being introduced so the bits inside of these bracket and hashtag when you open that up you then say right the next things i'm going to do is actually a bit of c sharp or vb code or whatever your your, your choice is i would highly recommend that you standardize on c sharp um, only for the reason that almost all in actual fact i haven't really seen a, an example of bimal uh, script out there that isn't in c sharp so if you could at all you know it would probably be good to uh, to um, standardize on so what i do here is i'm just going to set a variable uh, of connection and I'm going to uh, uh, cast it to an AST now all of our objects is prefixed with this AST and then DB connection or, or and here is where we're going to start using root node root node is a very important um, element to understand everything kind of is referenced from root node down because it's XML you'll go root node and then go further down so I'm going to go from root node connections and I'm going to go grab whatever the source connection is here I'm going to bring it into this variable so now effectively that source connection is inside of this variable then the next thing i'm going to do is i'll say listen i'm going to create um define another variable called import results and then i'm going to go and say connection dot import db so this is our first helper function that we use a lot now i must just say in in the current version of bimel and mist this import db function um there is in, in very large data sets you can't it does it doesn't work that very well but we have completely redesigned that uh, and then the next version is about literally 100 to 1,000 times fast. Now, what you can pass in here is a schema and then a table. And then you can have these import options. So in this case, I'm going to say, listen, I want to exclude foreign keys. So when I import this, I don't really want to bring in the foreign keys. I don't want to bring in any views. And I also want, don't want to bring in any column defaults because the source system already has the default in there i just want to bring in the value of that default when i'm going to run my patterns so don't bring in the actual um, default values and then as i said what the next thing we want to do is we really want to define the wireframe of what we need to do first so we the first thing we want to do is we want to get some uh, sorry tables and inside of the the collection of tables obviously we're going to get a table and we're going to give the table name and the table name is going to be let's just say it's going to be called uh, table dot name and the next thing obviously we need to assign the table to a schema name um, and we're going to assign it to aw extract 
and then we're going to close it off. And inside of a table, we obviously um, have columns. Um, and as I said, as, as you can see here, these L these tags, these uh, Bimble tags, you know, you know, they are logical. And I'm just going to define a sort of a placeholder here. So we're going to have many columns, but I'm just going to give one column here a name, and I'm just going to close this off like that. Okay. So as you can see here, so I'll just call this uh, column um, column. Now, as you can see here, again in Bimble, what we do is we, whenever you don't define a data type and, and things like that, so for a lot of elements, we set default. So obviously the default for data type is int32. So that's why I don't have to go in here and saying, well, it's int32 and it's nullable and it's etc. So we will set a lot of defaults for you. Um, and it's good to know what those are if, if you want to go on to BimbleScript.com or Virgins.com and have a look at some of these elements. Now, that is what, that's what I want to do. You know, I want to just go through and get all of my uh, import results or all of my schema. And then I want to go and create a bunch of tables. Now, how do we do that? Well, this is again where Bimble comes into its own. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to just go and create a for each node, uh, for each loop. And I'm going to say this in var. Um, and I'm going to call this tab, uh, sorry, table. And in here, I'm going to say we're table in... Uh, import results and I'm going to say listen well import result of table nodes and for all of those I'm going to open up the tag here and I'm not going to type the entire um, demo but I'm just going to type this first little bit here just to give you an idea of how simple it is and I'm going to close the tag so obviously I'm starting one there and, I, and as you can see when you're in the missed experience it kind of highlights the tags for you um, these things are not available in BitHelper. And the next thing I want to do is um, I want to obviously, um, for every table, I want to have the table name and, and et cetera. So, so again, I'll open up the tag here and I'll say equal to. Now, as soon as you do that, what it says is whatever is now inside of this, return the string for me. So it's going to say, listen, the table dot name. And I'll just show you here a little bit of intelligence here, table dot name. And that, you know, you can see that, so when you have that, it gives you intelligence of all of the things that is available to you inside of that table collection there. So there's many of them, um, but what we want to, we just literally want to bring back the table name. And then here is another little neat feature here. So now we want to obviously go and iterate through the columns. Well, you don't have to do that because again, we, you can go and say table dot, and you can say columns. So you can actually bring back a collection and then we have another helper function here so which is called get bimble and what that has done then is, is listen for this entire table for all of its columns just go and bring me back the bimble i don't want to go and type and define things just bring back the bimble here and that pretty much is it um, to create a very simple thing so i'm going to just show you here and again in in mist you have this ability to kind of preview what is called the expanded Bimble script. And this is a great debugging feature. So again, I have that little bit of uh, Bimble, or if you think about that as HTML or ASP.NET, so I've had that little bit of Bimble script, and it's gonna generate all of this Bimble for me. So again, I'm just gonna go and right click here and gonna say, convert to live Bimble script. And what you'll see here is very quickly, it imports all of these 85 tables there for me. So that is my entire, I suppose, um, adventure works now obviously um, there will be some errors there because I didn't actually bring in the right schema names etc etc but um, so what I've done here is I have duplicates here now I want to fix that because I want to put it in the schema called STG here now this is how easy it is to go and fix these things so so my table name is just table name but I can actually go in here and say hold on it is going to be not just a table name it's going to be the table dot schema dot name app and i'm bringing that back and i'm going to go underscore and if i now save this see what happens as easy as that is all of a sudden here i now have my schema name appended to my name now think of you know that is how easy it is to go and refactor an entire solution there okay so that is i suppose the most basic way of creating a Bimble script but we definitely don't want to stop there you know we we as I said is what, what I want to do is I want to show you some of the 
some of the features that um, that that you really want to know about um, when when you start off um, coding Bimble is um, is these things here. You want to centralize your code. As I said, is if you look at the first uh, bit of code there, um, there's nothing really new there. I mean, it's it's oh there is a lot new there, but now what you think is every time I'm going to import tables in different projects, I got to go and write all of this. You know, do I need to go and let me just open that up so I can show you. Do I need to go and repeat all of this code? Well, no, you don't want to repeat that code. One of the, one of the, uh, I suppose, core principles that used for Bimmel was the fact that you don't want to repeat anything or, or you want to repeat as little as possible. You want to try and centralize as much code. So we're going to do just that. We are going to now, um, we, I've taken out that um, code inside of the for each loop and I'm going to put it inside of uh, another table called I tables. Now again, this is my naming convention. So it, whenever I have an include file, I just go I dash, and then I have an include file. You can obviously number these if you want. So, but here I have the include file, and as you can as you can see here, I've got table, columns, and columns. So I've just prepared this a little bit here. But now I'm gonna, I'm just gonna paste the piece of code here, and I'll explain to you what this code does in a minute here. Um, so I'm just gonna put a bit of code in there. Oops, sorry, I think I've put the wrong code in there. Let me just see. Yep, I've put the wrong code in there. Um, there we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is, you know, I had that for each loop, and then then I just had inside of my previous package, I basically had this equal table um, dot. Sorry, table. I'll I'll use table node here. Because that's what I'm def defining here: table node dot columns dot get them all. Well, I'm going to replace that with the following code that I've got here. So that that's kind of what I'm taking out. So I'm, I've removed this bit out of code here. And I'm going to say, and this is why you want to centralize code. Really, I'm going to say, well, I now want to actually do something. I want to go and loop through every single column and we have a project that we've worked on a very big project there where we have a mysql data source and i suppose if you've got any non-sql server um, data source you are always going to want to convert some of the data types and this is what i'm going to show you here now is, and the reason why i've centralized this is what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say listen for for each column node in table node dot column so basically loop through that table nodes columns and for every column and I'm just ignoring binary data types here, which is basically a bit of a linked query. So um, uh, that's another useful thing if you're doing um, Bimble is, is to learn a bit of link, but you don't need a, a lot of uh, link to be honest. You know, just pretty much if you can write what I've what I've typed over here, if you can pretty much write write this, you you're good to go. Yeah. Um, and there's enough examples in on BimbleScript.com for you to really um, get proficient with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var t column. In other words, I'm, I'm setting a second second column um, equals transform column dot table no, dot com. Where is transform column? Um, so what I'm going to do there is, and then I'm just basically whatever I return from t column, I do a get bimble, and then I'm adding some additional row counts over here or some additional auditing columns. So again, this is a great place where if you want to have throughout your entire solution on all of your tables, you want to have your ETL um, load date and you want to maybe have your edit audit key or your load key, this is a great place where you can say, listen, I'm going to centralize this piece of code and then I know that every single table, because every single table that's going to use this piece of code is going to have the following keys on it. But I was talking about this transform column over here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to back backtrack a little bit and show you another little thing over here. Um, so what I've got here is, this is what you can call, uh, if you've got this bracket hash plus, you then define a sort of inline function. So now I've got a procedure inside of my Bimble script in the, very much the same way as you would do in a C-sharp application and stuff. So now I'm going to say, well, listen, here is my transform column, and I'm going to pass it in a table node, and I'm going to pass it in a column node. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just duplicate the column, which is over here, and then I'm going to go and iterate through the data types. Now, in the next uh, presentation, I'm going to show quite a bit more of this. But just to give you an idea here is what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, listen, for every single table I have, if it ends in an ID and it's an int32, just make it an int64 and 
you know, it's showing me the source data type there. So that's just a, a little bit of code just as an example to show you how you would use it in Node. And then all I need to do over here is I now need to just say to this, this guy over here, well, just go and I'm going to define a directive here. And the directive is of type include. And I'm going to say, well, I want to include a file. And the file is going to be called i-tables.bill. Simple as that. So basically what that command, a oh, uh, bit of a double paste. So what that command is going to say is, listen, go and take whatever is inside of this file and bring it into this location. So you can think for yourself as if you, if you have another one of these and another one of these, you, you don't have to repeat this piece of code again and again and again. Um, so I'll show, I'll save that and I'll show you what that's going to look like when I preview it. And I'll just show it to you in a preview because, oops, so that's not getting the columns there. Right. Oh, did I save this? I probably didn't save this. That's why. Um, Yep, there we go. So I just didn't save that 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 include file that I had. Um, so as you can see here, there it comes through and it comes through as standard um, over here. And I'll have some some places here where I have, as I can see here, I have a column that ends with ID. I've replaced the in32 with in64, and here I'm saying, listen, the, I'm adding an annotation. And we'll touch on annotations a little bit later in 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 a, in a future section. It's an important thing to remember. It's very important when you use Bimal. Um, but I'm not going to uh, go through it on in this section here. So basically, that's just another way to, of achieving the same thing, but using a, a centralized piece of code in good file. Now, as I said, is there is a, another way of doing this, which is using what we call the call bimble script file. Now, the first bit I'm going to do here is, as you can see here, I've stripped everything out. But so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, well, so I've just put a piece of code, a little bit of code here, which is basically saying, well, I'm now connecting to my data warehouse here. So this is basically connecting to connecting to AdventureWorks, uh, the data warehouse version of it. Um, the reason why is I want to show you how you can achieve the same thing. So in there, I've got facts and I've got dimensions. So basically, inside of my import results, I have all of the tables, schemas for the data warehouse. Um, and then I just have an open tag of dimensions and a closing tag of dimensions and i'm saying for each table node the import results table notes where the table name starts with them so effectively i'm bringing all of the dims and then i'm doing this thing called call bubble script c tables um, so what i'm basically saying is well i now not don't want to go and include a file i actually want to call, call a bubble script and i'm going to pass it some parameters and some variables or some properties and then that's going to do something so i'm going to go into c tables here and it's completely empty. Now, the first thing you want to do when you are you, um, creating um, a Bimble script is, is obviously you're passing in variables, so you need to define the variables. Now, here is this thing called, uh, again, I'm going to um, de declare an, uh, something else, which is called property. So, and the property over here is, again, it'll have a name, and the name for the first property here will be table node. And the type of the property here is, going to be um, obviously I'm passing in a table node here so this is going to be as I said it all starts with ASD table node and I'm going to also pass it in another another property here or another variable here and um, then I'll go property and the name of this is going to be uh, sorry the name of that is going to be table type because I want to pass it in whether it's a dimension a fact or whether it's just a normal table to be honest or if i don't pass anything in. and the type here is simply going to be a string okay so now i have to find all of these properties so now i need to use it so um what i need to do is i'm going to um, just again paste a little bit of code here so we can uh, go through it in a little bit more detail i'm going to jump to this so what i'm doing here is again i've got a little bit of views so i'm saying well I want to have the table type string and I'm going to inspect this variable, this value coming in from the table type. And if it's a D, I'm going to create a dimension. If it's an F, I'm doing a fact, else it's a table. So if it's not a D or F, it must be a table. Now that's just a bit of logic I have. And then I'm saying, well, my opening tag here is basically going to be whatever that re is returned there, table string. So I'm passing it in a D in my first example. So that's going to be dimension. 
and here's the name of the table node so because I'm passing in the table node and I've just hard set the schema here but again you can derive the schema from uh, the table node over here if you choose or you can pass in an annotation etc etc um, and then I do columns and then again table node I'll get columns I'll get bimble so again I could even at this stage here if I wanted to I could actually have again I could actually use the include file um, over, over here so you can kind of st um, li uh, string these things along so I could then have my include file there if I want and I'm just going to close whatever the tag is that's returned there so I'll save that down and I'll go back to my call tables here um, and as I said here I'm going to call that uh, that C tables there with dimensions and if I now go and look at the preview here what I should see here and this takes a little bit longer to run because it's a measure here I've got all of my dimensions coming down and if I go all the way down to the bottom there it stops with my dimensions tag now that's quite good but that's not all I want to do so let's just say I want to duplicate this right so I'm going to just copy that and I'm going to paste that and I'm just going to call this facts facts over here and I'm literally just going to go in here and say well that should be an F and I really want to have the tables that now start to affect and I'm going to save it down and now what will happen here is if I just look at my preview here um, so as soon as it comes up if I go down all the way down the bottom I now have facts over there and if I were to right click here and convert this to a live Bimble script you'll see here that I've got in, inside of uh, mist I'll have and these things are significant because they do have special meaning inside of mist I now have my dimensions over here and I have my facts over there and these are used whenever we design cubes um, it's important that they are defined as facts or facts views and dimensions but as simple as that I have now again imported my dimensions and my facts using and again if I type on it all of those objects um, that the 10 facts um, was imported with just that amount of uh, uh, code and obviously the reusable piece of code that's on the other side and and to be honest that in itself is the, the some of the core principles of BIML, how BIML work. It's about creating small pieces of code nuggets that you then string together or, or create building blocks that you can build things. So it's almost like thinking about it in the context of Lego blocks that you actually put different blocks together and all of a sudden you've got a spaceship. Okay, so that is it for this part of the uh, presentation. The next one um, is obviously going to cover... Um, a load and staging area uh, creating an incremental load and we specifically geared towards identifying changes and um, in, in the context of trying to move or moving these things up to a cloud platform like Azure or or, or um, AWS if, if that is your fl uh, flavor so um, thank you for um, bearing with me on this just a couple of resources there I just want to show point this out to you so my handle my twitter handle is bimble down under so please you know, feel free to follow me or connect with me i do post quite a couple of things there um bimble script is obviously um you know uh, the twitter handle for bimble script um we've got two linkedin groups there um the top one there is um, the i suppose the the bimble user group the bottom one there is the bimble user group for australia and new zealand so if you're in the australia new zealand area uh, connect there um, on there we post all kinds of things like we're having a, a, a Bimble user group in Sydney um, um, shortly and then we're having another one in Melbourne and we're having one uh, again in Brisbane and, and we'll have a good couple of, across the country um, and then if you want resources around MIST, regions.mist, bimblescript.com there is a load of resources on there if you want any examples or walkthroughs go to bimblescript.com in actual fact you probably downloaded this from bimblescript.com so you, you already know where that is if you want to get Bits Helper, um, the free version of Bimble is, is embedded inside of bitshelper.codeplex.com and then all of the documentation is verizons.com um, documentation. Um, you've got my email addresses in here. Um, as I said, I'm pretty mad about Bimble, so anything remotely related to Bimble, please feel free to reach out to me um, and also feel free to use the resources that um, I make available uh, for your own uh, personal use. Um, there so once again, thanks for listening and um, please join me for the next session.